Hi, it's Natasha. And Khalil. And we are the co-hosts of Woke Woke and Free. Free. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to our 235th episode of Woke and Free. If you've been tuning in every week for Woke and Free Wednesday, you know that Woke and Free is all about being real and honest with each other and you. We talk about everything and anything important to us, you, the world, and nothing is off the table. This week's topic is a little bit more somber, uh, but it's a very important topic, and we hope that it provides solace and comfort and insight to those who are struggling with the loss of a pet or a loved one. And this week's topic is how to deal with losing a pet. So before we dive deep onto that journey, a couple of things to cover. First, have you downloaded this episode on WokenFree.com, the Podbean app? If not, please do, because that's how you join the conversation. Because if you download the episode, that's how you can put in your comments. And we definitely want to hear from you every single week. Now, if you go to WokenFree.com and you're Like, guys, I'm listening. I would love to download, but I just can't for whatever the reason is. Then we just ask that you go to the listen tab and then pick your platform of choice where you're going to follow and subscribe to the show. So we're on iTunes. We're on TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play. We definitely would love more subscribers on our YouTube channel. Holler at us on iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify. It's a woke and free world, guys. So make sure you do that. Now, also on WokenFree.com, if you can, please click to subscribe to follow the show so we get that, we get your support on through Podbean itself. And then for social, you can always holler at us and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Pinterest, and LinkedIn at Woken Free. Now, if you have 90 seconds, which I know there's a lot going on in this world, but if you can spare it, we would greatly appreciate it. Please go to WokenFree.com, go on the Listen tab, and then pick where you want to review the show at. So we love our reviews on iTunes. We love our reviews on Good Pods. Give us a review. We appreciate it. Let us know how the show is serving you. And with that, I'm going to kick it to you, Khalil. And then before we start this conversation, we like to share a little bit about ourselves. This week, we are asking, would you rather have uncontrollable blinking or have your nose flare nonstop? Oh, Joy, another pointless question. Excellent. Really? Yes. Doesn't seem insightful in the least. Given the somber topic we're going to be addressing, this seems really crazy to start with. As these questions never are in line with the topic. But I That's make a true. connection somehow. Oh, you mean your sloppy transition? Nice. Yeah. Sloppy transition? That's what you call that? I mean, that's some You don't call it smooth operator? No, Sade. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> so to answer your weirdo question. Uh, <laughs> my weirdo question, like I created it. Indeed. Uh, my my answer would be uncontrollable blinking because I believe that a nose flare up to me just sounds disgusting. And I'm just not, I'm not here for that. But uh, the blinking thing, sometimes I do have uncontrollable blinking. So, <laughs> so I you want me like- to just stare at you and laugh? I mean, if that's the only option, I guess. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're going to bring me like tremendous, you know, Joy? entertainment. Oh, okay. That cool. that would be great if you if you so you still would choose that, even though I'm just going to laugh nonstop. I mean, how's that different from the here and now? <laughs> it's, I mean, it's really going to be crazy if oh, I saw yeah. you doing so that. So those are your Christmas wishes, that you think? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I dude, try to make you laugh at okay. my life. <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting that you chose that one. Mm-hmm. But I actually think about it from a quality of life issue. So mm-hmm. if you blink uncontrollable, then you can't really see that well. So I, I can't do that because uh, I still want to go out and do stuff or be able to go about my business. So theory, imagine if yeah. you're trying to work on stuff and you're blinking uncontrollably. It's going to make mm-hmm. it a little bit hard because mm-hmm. everything's going to flash by and it's going to be oh, weird. Sure. So I'll go with the nose flare because you can just chill out at home if your nose is flaring with out. your nostrils out and route. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> you still your quality of life is the same. It doesn't ruin you. That's what's good but about it. It changes your physical appearance in front of nobody. You're sitting in front of your computer. You're assuming I don't have a life. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is anybody would know if that if they had this situation come up, they know what to do. You know, if someone comes up on a Zoom and their nose is flared and they're just staring at you, you would then do your uncontrollable laughing as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So, no, I wouldn't. I, I don't think know. the what blinking is, games you're playing. The blinking is a lot more funny than the nose flare. The nose flare is just like, why are they doing that? Is there something wrong with them? 
Is there something that's lost in their mind? That's what I kind of want to know. Ah, about. here we go, guys. <laughs> did you get did you hear that one? <laughs> yeah. Have they lost gets, their mind actually? It gets new each and every time. It, it, yeah, it does. Yeah. Because we are talking about loss. Maybe uh-huh. not loss of minds, but in this episode mm-hmm. we're talking about loss of pets. So maybe you arrived. might know yeah. how did I even arrive at that conclusion that a lost mind can be related to the lost What's pet. What's the question, Khalil? <laughs> <laughs> Hop to it, crazy. <laughs> I'm the crazy one, but I'm trying to I'm trying to show you the connection between mm-hmm. different things that we speak of. Yes. Everything is connected. Indeed. How to deal with losing a pet. Thank in your you, words. finally. <laughs> All right. So the question has been posed. And now to answer the question... If you aren't already aware, which you should have, because you should have read the Woken Free report, the recent one from February, where we shared our sad news, and I've talked about it on my blog on dressroommate.com, which is our beloved Toby, our tuxedo cat of 12 years, unfortunately transitioned and has passed uh, on February 2nd, and we're very sad to have lost him, and uh, and I've even suffered more loss uh, in my own family uh, since that day as well. And so a, a bit, uh, it's a bit of a, it was a heavy February uh, for 2022. And we wanted to dedicate this episode to our sweet kitty in heaven. Uh, figuratively speaking, we're not quite sure where everyone stands on that. So you, you make your judgment call, listener. Uh, <laughs> but losing a hat is, pet is just as hard as losing any loved one uh, or creature in your life because it's, you know, for us, Toby was our first fur baby, right? We got him when I was in law school and I had always wanted a cat and my mom had always been afraid of like black cats. So I was desperately <laughs> excited to get a black cat. <laughs> uh, and uh, she ended up liking Toby as well, which was ironic. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I would say when it comes to losing a pet, <sighs> Here's my following tips of advice, and I I really hope this helps those listening who are dealing with this right now. First, acknowledge the loss. Uh, It's not easy. It's not meant to be, right? Death is final, and so that means, yeah, no no opportunity to hear the meow again, no opportunity to get annoyed or happy again, and you're going to be sad, and there's no way around it. It's only You can only go through that sadness and, and really go through the different stages of grief. And absolutely, you should grieve your lost pets. Uh, you know, the, the, these are your loved babies. And whether it means you're going to be sad for a couple of hours, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, whatever the time is, it's going to be what it is for you. And I don't think you should get caught up on how long that sadness lingers. I think you should just get, go through the pain. Don't try to avoid it. Uh, give yourself grace. Uh, you know, grieving looks different. For each and every one of us, and however long or however you need to process, as long as it doesn't include self-harm, of course, to yourself or others, please give yourself the grace to do that. I would recommend leaning on your tribe. Uh, There are people in your life that you can speak to that make you feel emotionally safe no matter what's going on in your life. And and if you're lucky enough to be a person who has multiple people, who have multiple people that fit that category for you, then you should consider yourself very blessed and you should totally lean into that support for yourself during hard times like this because these are the people that will remind you of the good times and not from a toxic positivity perspective, but from a space of, yeah, you're missing the person, but also... We can't forget to be grateful for the love and uh, the the humor that that came with that love in your life that is no longer here because they've transitioned. And that's pretty much my last point, which is focus on the gain, not the loss. It's really overwhelming to just sit in a space of sadness and think about all the lost time that you have with them because to love someone means that you eventually have to say goodbye. And as impossible as that seems and as heart pain wrenching as that is, it is what it is to love is to is to lose that person or that that creature at some point. So uh, I would say just try to hone in on all the gratefulness. And I had a complicated relationship with Toby because he wasn't exactly the cat we wanted. Right. Like he was in love with Khalil and he was like, mm, whatever. Tosh. But you were busy. That's why. Exactly. Because we got him when I was started law school and he wanted to sit on my law books and I became a lunatic because of that. And so he was like, all right, sis, I don't have time for you. And you two uh, very much bonded, which I love. But he and tried to take me out a couple times, though. He just loved to snuggles in your... He'd sleep sh- on my neck. Snuggles. Right on the throat. That was a snuggles. Mm. That's what we call snuggles here. 
Major sus. We don't give kisses and hugs in our household. We give schnaggles. And he wanted to schnaggle. Are you capping right now? Excuse you? <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me crazy questions. Carl. Okay. <laughs> So he snuggled and uh, I'm grateful for his snuggles. I'm grateful for his annoying meows and his crazy meows when we traveled. And I'm grateful for the love that I saw between you and him. And I'm grateful for the time with him. Uh, he will forever be missed, forever be missed. But I'm very grateful. Okay. Those are some good tips to follow. Mm-hmm. And I have four more tips that possibly could help. Yep. And the first one is, is I think you should cherish the moment you had with the pet. So mm. just think about certain things that you did with the pet and what you enjoyed about, enjoyed about that. It's just, it'll make you feel good, I think. Mm-hmm. The next thing is to understand that there's no future pet that could ever replace this pet mm. that you lost. Uh, this will, the, there's no other pet that'll be exactly the same. Yeah. You know, every, they all have their unique personalities. So. Uh, that's the thing. They're they're all different. Yep. So just remember, yeah, that's that's Run that. And done, yeah. The third thing is to discuss some of the events that occurred with you, the pet, and probably somebody else. Because uh, <laughs> you know sometimes you have those situations where the, the pet was doing something and somebody caught him doing that, and it's kind of funny to go over to and talk to people about that, like the funny things your pet used to do, like his snuggles. Like when he used to like attack me when I would leave oh, the bathroom yes. or something. Oh, he enjoyed that so much. <laughs> yeah, you know? he would just grab my calves. Yeah. So it was, he was really weird. To he just do jump it. up yeah. and grab it. Yeah. Totally excited. Yeah. I'm not sure why, but he liked to do yeah, that. He caught you lovely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. And then the last thing is just like a general thing is that you got to remember there's a circle of life. Mm. To live is to die, and that's you know mm. how life is. This is uh, so incredibly hard to talk about. And I'm a weeper, guys. Like, that's just like, I live, Khalil knows, I could watch a commercial about, you know, dog food and I'm in tears. Like, this is, oh! Come on. Like, I am just a weeper. So, uh, please, you know, know this about me, accept this about me, don't accept it, do you. Either way, I'm weeping. Uh, <laughs> and so then my, my question then to you is, what would you say is n- not something that s- someone should say when talking to a person who's lost a pet? I think that people probably should wait a while before they ask you if you're going to replace that pet. Mm. I think it could be a soft point for many people. So it's best just yeah. to avoid that. And, you know, it's just more respectful to not bring that up so soon because they lost mm. their pet. They need some time to get over that. So I think. It's good. Just don't don't bring that up. I know people like to do that. They're like, man, you're going to yeah. get immediately. But you should just, just wait a little bit before asking that. Wow, that's a really good one. Uh, for me, I would say, interestingly enough, one of the things that was said uh, quite frequently uh, in this experience, and I'm, I'm not quite sure why that was deemed, uh, why someone would think that's appropriate to say, but any remark critiquing how long the pet lived, uh, or even if you go into an inquiry around how the pet died, again, put yourself in that person's shoes. If the person is going to tell you details around loss, they're going to detail that to you. You don't need to ask them 21 questions about it. They will say any details they feel is relevant for the conversation and remarking how long or how short that animal lived is not doing anything for the person who's lost that pet (laughs) other than making them now be confused, possibly irate, uh, and then even more saddened. So is that really necessary to add that type of nonsense to that person's day? No. As my Angela once taught us, we should be the sunshine in other people's skies. Please be a blessing, everyone. Stop confusing things for people and adding unnecessary rhetoric or commentary. As they say, if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing at all. Just give your condolences. I'm so Sorry for your loss. Is that so hard? I think not. <laughs> I think not. But is it nice to ask them how the pet died? I mean, it's, you know, I think, you think, that's not I think nice. typically people will give that detail, you know, oh, my, my pet passed, right? Like, I think on close, close family and friends can ask you that stuff, but when you aren't like in that person's inner circle, I just, to me, it seems like it can be invasive. And so just be mindful that you could be upsetting the person, right? In, in life, listen, 
be woke and free, do what you want to do. But a part of the human existence is also living with a, a little bit of space of empathy for others. And it's, it's, would you, I know I wouldn't want to be harassed around information uh, when I was, when I'm dealing with a loss and that's just where I sit with it. If, if that is not the common hmm. perspective, then I'm open to having conversation around it. I just always say, be mindful of when you say things to th- to people, remember and try to think about what you think, how they're going to respond to it. Because if you can anticipate that before you say things, maybe you won't have like foot and mouth disease, which is, as you know, something I've suffered with for quite many wow. years. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And then I guess the next thing that uh, I think is going to be really important for the Woken Free Nation to think about, con- pontificate, is what would you say are the biggest lessons learned from losing a pet? Well, I've been on this rodeo once or actually before, yeah. a couple times before. Mm-hmm. So over the course of those situations, I've learned that, for one, you can have a pet for a long time, but you don't realize that they could actually be lost at any moment. It can it can come kind of quickly, so I think you should always be prepared in your head to, for that moment, I guess, and know that, you know, the day can come. So definitely cherish those moments that you do have with the pet anytime you can. Like, definitely mm. try to remember it and maybe capture it in your mind. Those well, good, those just good to points. contextualize for folks, because we are also practitioners of the law of attraction. So you're not telling folks to anticipate death, but you're just saying to be more present and to yeah, really I'm not lean saying, into the love. I'm just saying yeah. the death okay. is a fact. So because just with that in mind and the fact that they can go fast, mm-hmm. you need to like cherish those moments that do like those moments of joy that you do have with the pet. Yeah. So like if the pet lays in your lap a lot, you should just be like, man, I love this happening. And not just take it for granted, like you'll like the the He's pet always will, another day to do. Yeah, this, yeah. like your pet will mm. always be there. Just realize that you know this is really a, a great moment, like that. Just ah, uh, okay. Like just be really be glad, present. like yeah, yeah, and be really thankful for it. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Don't not not necessarily think that this is gonna go, or just just cherish the moment that okay. you're spending with them. The next thing is to you got to accept that their new temperament it comes like. Just as their life is coming to an end. So yeah. you might notice their change and you might want to be upset because, hey, they used to do this, but they're not. But you got to kind of give them grace and allow them to yeah. be their new self as they begin to transition. transition. Yeah. yeah. So you got to let the, you got to let it happen because mm-hmm. they, they definitely aren't the same when it gets close to that time. Mm-hmm. So that's something I've learned. And the last thing is that their family and since they are family, you always will remember them. They never will be forgotten. Absolutely. I love that. I would say a couple of things to add to that would be love is precious because uh, life is not guaranteed to your point. And if you are lucky to have love in your life, whether it is from a pet or from a person through friendship, through family, through romance, all of the above, uh, you never know when you're going to lose a loved one. So please be mindful as to your point. Be present when you're having a phone call. Be present in the conversation when you're talking and walking the dog or, you know, be present. Stop focusing on the 10 steps ahead and be here for the here and now. Also, relationships are complicated. People or creatures don't always act in the way that you want. And I think too many of us know this to be true day in and day out. And that's because people and creatures are both very complex. And we have to remember that if folks or creatures were meant to be a different way, they would be. So we have to take people and creatures as they are. And if you want either in your life, then you have to accommodate space for them and obviously have boundaries in place. We would never in any way advise to be unhappy because you're trying to make space for, you know, some type of dragon in your life. That's crazy talk. People or creature alike. Oh, (laughs) I'm going to say, if that's your pet of flavor, then you can go with that. Well, you definitely can be a guest on Woken Free anytime if you happen to have a real life dragon. Yeah. All about that. Uh, (laughs) I was all for Aragon. (laughs) But uh, my last point is, and we know this, but we wanted to make sure that uh, folks heard it, is it's possible to live with loss, right? I I couldn't tell you a day that I've lived without thinking about a, a you know, a person 
or a, a creature that's no longer with me today, whether they have transitioned and they're not on this earth or they're just not, there's not a space in my life anymore for them. It's hard. And, and you, and you wonder how do you go on and you do and time heals uh, and your heart is heavy, but your heart can take it. Okay. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. So what's the, what's the, what's the scenario? It's scenario time, guys. Scenario one. Cheeto adopted a pet tiger at a local animal sanctuary. He would drive three hours both ways every weekend to visit the sanctuary and try to see his pet. The tiger passed away recently, so he wanted to collect the ashes and spread them across the Pacific Ocean. The animal sanctuary denied his request. What should Cheeto do now? Oh, interesting. Huh. So the adoption, though, it was adoption in name, not in legal right, right? Legal right. No, I mean, yeah, he didn't yeah. have any... There, there's no to stake the tiger, to it. Yeah, the, yeah. the tiger is free to roam so the sanctuary. So that would probably justify why the sanctuary was uh, denied the request, because there's no legal stake to the animal that has demise. So at the end of the day, uh, should Cheeto not move forward with uh, some type of remembrance ceremony. Of course, of course not. He, Cheeto should, he should do that. However, he might need to reimagine uh, what that remembrance uh, ceremony is going to be because he won't have the ashes. So does he just want to maybe rent a boat or go out on a boat in the ocean and maybe do some type of uh, uh what's that thing where they put the balloons and the, 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 they light the thing and it flies up in the air. The, you know, Viking the, ceremony. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you are so shameful and outrageous what? at all days, all times of the day. <laughs> I am so done. Get away! From I tried. Me. <laughs> I tried. Got tried. It's close. They get on. They put light them on boats. On fire in the middle of the ocean. Is that what I'm suggesting? Absolutely they light the bodies not. on fire. The boat. They send it off. To What's sea. your response? It's something like that. <laughs> I'm so tired. I don't know what this life is anymore. No, I was close I though. I'm not here for us. At least I tried. You got to give me credit. That's and that's what I think Cheeto should do. I think he should... Light himself on fire. No, he should give himself another try. And maybe try to, like, raise up the stakes and say, let me speak to the supervisor. You know how people do? Because maybe he just spoke with someone who works there. But I'm not mad at that advice either, yeah? Just try. You never know. Maybe they'll Absolutely. say, all right, we'll make an exception. And he'll say, hey, I don't even have to enter the ground. Especially if he... Uh, you just give it to me. If he provides the argument that he'll pay for the cremation of the tiger and also a hefty donation to the sanctuary, I think then they might be more inclined yeah. to say yes. <laughs> so I think he should give that a shot before if giving up. And then okay. if that gets denied again, then I think, yeah, just continue and do a ceremony with your family and tell them how you love that tiger. <laughs> the family gets involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bring them in because you have nobody else to celebrate with. Lean in. <laughs> I mean, he could Lean celebrate with there. friends, yeah. but it's it's up to him. Friends are a family, but that's friends the Friends are a chosen family, absolutely. Let's not forget okay. that. Okay, so yeah, it's his choice, but I think he uh -huh. celebrates with them if he gets denied again when he goes and, you know, builds up a new request. We'll say a prayer for you, Cheeto. Yep. Yeah. Scenario two. Kalaya had a Boston Terrier named Toshi, whom she lost while on her routine walk when another dog attacked him. Should Kalaya seek to have that dog that attacked put down to ease the pain of her loss? That's a really savage question. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of your mind. It's a good question. This happens. It is a really this does question. happen sometimes. So, Kalaya is in a really tough situation because A, uh, Kalaya lost a pet uh, due to no, no action of her own, but actually uh, harm brought to her dog by someone a else. Bad dog owner. Well, yeah. So because they don't have control, of, have their control dog. of their dog, that's the bad so dog owner. I guess me. either way, I mean, some something has to be done against that dog to prevent any future harm to other animals, right? So whether that animal gets tested or possibly that uh, that dog has to be put down. I think it's not it's not in like retaliation to the loss of her dog, but I think that something has to be done to ensure that this is a dog that is safe to be around other people and and this was either like is was this a freak accident or is this a repeat offender like we need to kind of contextualize and understand what's going on and then Kalaya needs to seek you know whatever type of treatment is necessary to you know remedy the loss of that dog i mean it's, it's she's going to live with that pain for the rest of her life but you know that's it sounds like a really traumatic situation and so i just would make sure that she's doing all right and isn't like waking up screaming like her dog's name <laughs> and i you know okay. like, 
that type right. of situation. Your thoughts? Mine is to definitely go after that dog and make sure it gets put down. Remember, and not this to ease your pain. Free, right? so. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to explain why. It's not to ease your pain. Mm-hmm. It's actually to keep other dogs safe because oh, okay. I think that, I mean, to me, this like... To get to that level, I think it's, for me, it's too late. I think that dog, there's no, there's really no saving grace. I mean, you could try to go to the dog whisperer, but the, the dog owner's not going to do that. I mean, unless there's some type of law where you can force them, but you can't do any of mm-hmm. it, right? So, but mm-hmm. you can get the dog put down because. Yeah. That, I mean, it sounds like a very savage. Yeah. Cause that's bad. That like one. to me, I don't know. You, if you couldn't control your dog from hurting another dog yeah. that didn't att- attack in any way, then. There's a problem with that dog, and I think the owner should be fined as well. Mm-hmm. So I think there should be a fine, and then the dog are going to unfortunately have to put it down because uh, that's not acceptable. We don't have the society where people like you, you know, your pets can just hurt other pets. That's not right, and mm-hmm. I wouldn't want that to happen to another pet. So it's either put down or go to the dog whisperer. But I, like I said, I don't think you can for- force people to send their dogs uh, to other people. Gotcha. Okay. Scenario three, Gisela lost her bearded dragon a few days ago. When she told her coworkers her pet lived three great years, a lot of them said, wow, that is short. Do you think her coworkers were correct in telling Gisela how they felt? You're hilarious. How am I hilarious? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing so hard? <laughs> <laughs> I told you these scenarios just come from the ether. I don't, yeah, I I don't really do. think it. Just, I it just comes. Yeah, the spirit just downloads into you, right? Yeah, get away from me. <laughs> too Fun. much. A little too much. I don't know what this life is. Oh. I know, because you love bearded dragons. What can I say? Why are you talking smack? I have no beef with a bearded dragon. Am I like the first fan of reptilians? No, absolutely not. I think you don't like them cold. I prefer blo- warm blooded animals per- per- personally. That's but understandable. I'm all for folks who have a passion and love for the for their cold blooded animals. And to answer the question, I would say or the scenario, I would say again that doesn't provide any solace to Gisela. Uh, she lost a loved one. And so telling her, <laughs> whether it was a bearded dragon, a cat, a dog, it doesn't matter what her creature was, any time frame as to whether you say it's short or long is not doing anything for Gisela. So there's no point to say it. There's no ROI, right? We have to always remember the ROI and when we're, what we're doing and what we're saying. And so all that should have been said is, Gisela, I'm so sorry for your loss. Let me know if there's anything you need during this time. That's it. Just be yeah. a blessing. It's not that hard. It really isn't. Yeah, I think I think they're incorrect in telling her this. Mm-hmm. It's like there's nothing good to come of it. It just it's it almost like it's trying to shame her or something. Exactly. It's like wow, you your pet couldn't even last this long. I mean, mm-hmm. what are you what are you trying to say about the owner? There's no exactly. unless you want to fight or something. Then why are you doing this? It's like if you want to meet in the parking lot, this is how you start it off. You say that first, and you wait in the parking lot and. It's dark out and something might happen. See, you guys, you can take the boy out of Queens, New York, but you can't take the Queens, no, New I'm York, not, out of the boy. No, I'm not saying I would do that. I'm just saying but what you're people, just setting if up they the do scenario that. For yeah, people. I would never yeah. do this. I, and this is not this is not my style. I'm not that kind of person. I'm never. I'm not that person. Like I said, we know the name that's of not this me. show, so absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, that's not me, but I'm saying okay. but there are people that they will take Indeed. this to that next degree. Oh, there are people who will slash tires on stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> the ether told you that, too. The, the Download is real. <laughs> yeah, see, either told you about a situation like that that indeed, I heard. Indeed, okay. indeed. But it looks like we are at that time again. We hope this was uh, <laughs> both comforting and entertaining and insightful because it is the coming to the end of our 235th episode of Well Done Free. Quite the episode doing a bit of a somber topic how to deal with losing a pet. What do folks need to do now, Kalu? They know what to do. They know to come back next week for the new Woken Free Wednesday episode. Make sure you follow us on social media to follow along in the conversation. And make sure you tune in next week for Woken Free Wednesday to join the conversation at WokenFree.com. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, submit a topic for an upcoming episode, make sure you hit us up on our Contact Us page at WokenFree.com. That is W-O-K-E-N. F-R-E-E dot com. And for social, mentioned it earlier in the episode, you can always find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Pinterest, and LinkedIn at Woken Free. And for all sponsorship or collaboration queries, 
hit us up on our contact us page at WokenFree.com. If you didn't already subscribe, please do share the episode and make sure you come back to join the conversation every Wednesday for Woken Free Wednesdays. Remember, Woken Free is more than a podcast. It is a way of life. Until next time.